Okay, so now let's introduce the experimental technology that we're using to measure the effects of genetic perturbations in single cells. In the last decade or so, there's been this really amazing technology uh, for genetic uh, engineering and editing called CRISPR-Cas9, which you may have heard about in the news. And this is a gene editing technology that allows us to specifically knock out or reduce the expression of a target gene. And how CRISPR-Cas9 works is we have this protein called the Cas9 nuclease, and this is guided to a specific uh, sequence in your genome based on the sequence of a specific single guide RNA. And this guide RNA can guide you to any given gene, such as TCF7 or PDCD1, and it brings along the Cas9 nuclease. And when the Cas9 nuclease binds at that specific site, it leads to a double strand break in the genome. And this is a really bad thing for the genome in general, but it allows us to actually uh, reduce or eliminate the expression of a target gene. And so what happens when you have this break is that repair machinery in our bodies gets activated. And while trying to repair this break, uh, there are mutations that are typically made. And those mutations that are now introduced into the gene lead to reduction or complete loss of that gene's expression. So this gives us the ability to reduce or knock out the expression of a gene like TCF7 or PDCD1 in a highly targeted and specific way. Okay, so now using the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology, we can take T cells and with, for each T cell, knock out a specific gene of interest. So for instance, in this T cell, we might have knocked out the gene TCF7, and in this T cell, we might have knocked out the gene PDCD1. And we can do these perturbations in parallel and grow up these T cells. And then now we've genetically added these T cells, we can introduce them into cancer, and the T cells will get activated in the cancer environment, and eventually they'll become exhausted. Uh, and so after some time, we can isolate the T cells from the cancer and carry out the perturb-seq experiment. And perturb-seq will allow us to read out for every individual T cell, both the perturbation it received, here A or B, as well as the gene expression within that single cell. And we're able to read out the perturbation the cell received because the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, leaves behind a specific sequence in the DNA that tells us what genetic perturbation that cell received. So the outcome, again, is the expression of every single gene in a single cell, as well as the genetic perturbation the cell received. And we know that perturbing one gene will have effects on many other genes in the cell. So for instance, this genetic perturbation A is associated with uh, the effector T cell state, which we can read out by looking at the gene expression. And this perturbation B is associated with a terminal exhausted T cell state, which again, we can read out by looking at the transcriptional information in that single cell. So the data that you'll get will be structured as follows in the challenge, where you'll receive a gene expression matrix that again has the expression of every single gene in every single cell. And in addition, you'll see uh, for every single cell what perturbation that cell received. So for instance, cell one, received the perturbation tox, meaning the tox gene was knocked out. The tox gene expression should be reduced in that cell or at zero. And remember, you have that information as well as the transcriptional information. So the advantages of perturb-seq are many. This is a single cell readout, so we can read you know, the effects of perturbations in thousands and thousands of cells, so that's really incredible. We can test many individual perturbations in parallel. So you see here, you know, there's many different perturbations we're characterizing. And because we have the perturbation and the resulting gene expression in the same cell, that allows us to think about causality and inferring gene regulation. Now, the disadvantage of perturb-seq is that it's really challenging to test all possible 20,000 perturbations. So in this challenge, uh, we're looking at about 70 perturbations. To characterize all 20,000 perturbations, it would take one Mark Schwartz, which is the, uh, who is the really you know, talented physician scientist who performed these experiments, it would take him about 50 years to collect all that data. And likewise, if we looked at combinations of perturbations, for instance, we wanted to knock out tox and TCF7, that would be, you know, that would require hundreds and hundreds of millions of cells to really characterize. So the, the throughput of perturb-seq is really good, but it's not infinite. There are limitations. And our hope is, with the data science challenge, is that we can computationally move past some of these limitations. And even though we're only able to measure you know, a relatively small number of perturbations, we believe that we can learn uh, the effects of perturbations in genes that weren't measured in the experiment. So in the third lecture, we are going to go over the actual experiment that Mark Schwartz did, 
to generate the perturbed seek data that will be used in the data science challenge. And you will see uh, how to manipulate that data and analyze it and work with it. And this will get you ready to do all three tasks uh, in the challenge. Mm -hmm.